Hey everyone, this is my top 5 tips for editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's jump into it. So tip number one is revealing hidden track names. This is one I have to thank Vashi Nedomansky for and Carl Soleil. I'm sorry if I pronounced those wrong, as I found it out from them about two years ago. And it's made managing projects with lots of layers so much easier. So even if you've already renamed all of your tracks within Premiere, once you minimize them all, you can't actually see them. If you want to reveal those names, right click on the blank area of the track. Scroll down to where it says Customize, the button editor window will appear. Grab the track name, for example V1, and drag it to the end of the list of icons. It has to be the last one for this to work. This will activate the names for all of the other layers. You'll have to repeat this process for both the video and audio tracks separately. Now you can see all of your track names, even when all of your layers are minimized. Tip number two is Q and W. The Q and W keys were a game changer for me when I found out about them. For someone like me who edits a lot of talking head and interview style videos, these two keys alone have saved me so much time. The Q and W keys are what are known as top and tails editing. When you are cutting in the timeline, hitting the Q key will ripple delete everything from the current playhead position to your last cut. The W key does the opposite. When you press W, it will ripple delete everything from the current playhead position up until the next edit. Keep in mind, this will only affect the tracks that have been selected. I'm often cut into music and so I will lock the audio track and use Q and W to edit along. I use the up and down arrows as well to cycle through clips quickly if I need to make any amends. I can use the J, K and L keys as well if needed, which saves me having to use the mouse at all. Tip number three is the global effects mute button. This is another quick and handy tool that is also slightly hidden at first. To find it, click on the button editor just below the monitor and find the FX button. Drag this down onto the button toolbar. This handy button is useful when you're working with a project that has a lot of heavy effects and color work. When you click it, it will disable all of these effects, which will allow you to have much smoother playback when editing. Depending on your computer setup, this will be more useful to some than others. If you've been experiencing laggy playback, then this may help. Just remember to turn the button off when you're finished. Tip number four, get your settings right. This one will be slightly different for everyone, as our editing systems and personal preferences will differ. The main point behind this tip is to get you started on the right foot when you begin a new project. Simple things like making sure you have autosave set up. If your GPU allows it, making sure you have hardware encoding switched on. Personal preferences as well, like if you have bins opening as a new tab or a floating window. Automatic audio waveform generation and default media scaling. Just go through your settings and make sure you have everything set up how you like it and that will give you the best performance when editing. Tip number five, Use Media Encoder. Now, depending on how much you regularly edit, you may already be doing this. Unlike exporting straight from Premiere Pro itself, when you export through Media Encoder, you can export multiple files at once. This gives you the option to carry on editing within Premiere Pro if needed. Media Encoder will let you add an unlimited amount of videos to the queue, and it will keep on exporting them in the background until they're all done. Also, I haven't done any scientific tests, but if you export through Media Encoder, I'm convinced that it's slightly faster. Maybe. Okay, so a little bonus tip. Use the Media Browser. The Media Browser has to be one of the most overlooked tools within Premiere Pro. The number of times I've seen people either dragging files into their project or double clicking and importing them that way. Your editing life will be so much easier once you start using the Media Browser to find and import your files. That's what it's there for. I hope you found these editing tips useful. If you want to see more videos on cinematography and filmmaking in general, you can subscribe below or by clicking the link on screen. I make new videos every week, and so I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.